Hey everyone. Today we're going to shift our focus away from phonetics and phonology and turn to the area of linguistics known as morphology. So the first logical question to ask is just what is morphology? And it's really tempting to just say that morphology is the study of words, which would be totally fine as long as we understand that words aren't really a thing. There's no such thing as words. Is that what I'm saying? Well, not exactly. But let's look at a couple of examples to get a sense of what I'm going to try to convince you of. Consider the following sentence. Homer trashed the living room. How many words does this sentence have? I'm going to guess that you said five, right? Homer trashed the living room. So how about this sentence? Todd trashed the bedroom. How many words in this one? So this time in the sentence, Todd trashed the bedroom, I bet we only get four words, right? So Todd trashed the bedroom is four words and Homer trashed the living room is five words. You can see the problem here, right? Simply put, the problem is this. We're making the mistake of thinking of words as things defined by white space between them. In reality, in English, words like living room and bedroom are both really each just single words. They're what we call compounds. It's really important to understand that we don't speak languages with spaces between the words. If you didn't know English, for example, what you would hear would be something that I've represented graphically by running all the letters of all the words together. You wouldn't really know where one word ended and another began. So let's step outside of English and look at another language as an example of the way that the concept of word is very slippery. Consider the following two sentences, for example, from Spanish. The first one is Homer lo está destrozando, which literally translated word by word means Homer it is destroying. And we can see that's what he's doing, which translates basically to Homer's trashing it. Okay, so now what about the next one? The second sentence is Homer está destrozándolo, which literally word by word translated means something like Homer is destroying it. And Homer is still destroying it. Given a better English translation, it would be something like Homer's trashing it. Exactly the same, by the way, as the last example. How many words are there in this one? Pretty much any Spanish speaker is going to tell us that the answer is three. On the one hand, we've got the sentence, Homer lo está destrozando. And on the other, we've got the sentence, Homer está destrozándolo. These sentences have exactly the same material and they mean exactly the same thing. The problem is that they have a different number of words. And that's confusing. It is a bit puzzling, but building on the idea, let's think of another way that the concept of word is actually pretty tricky. So members of the audience and folks at home watching on TV, I promise there's nothing up my sleeve. But here's a word in Spanish. Comamoslo. Comamoslo translates into English as, let's eat it. So if you happen to know Spanish, you know that there's a lot of information packed into this one single word. We've got the verb eat. We know that it's a command or imperative form. And we know that it's in the first person plural. 
which also means that Spanish has single words for stuff that in English requires multiple word sentences. Okay then, let's get back to the big picture here. The concept of word is really slippery. And the closer you look, both within languages and across languages, the slipperier it gets. First, we can't just think of words as those things with spaces between them. Because if we do that, we're confusing the conventions we use for writing with linguistic structure. Simply put, those spaces are misleading. Sure, we write bedroom as one quote unquote word, and we write living room as two. But really, they're each just single words, words that we call compound words. Second, what counts as a word in one language might just be a sentence with multiple words in another. Just like our example here of comamoslo and let's eat it. So have I been trying to tell you that there's no such thing as words after all? No, that's not exactly what I'm trying to tell you. What I am trying to tell you is that the concept of word isn't really a linguistic unit in the sense, for example, that sound units like phonemes are as fundamental building blocks in spoken languages. It's useful to think instead of the concept of word as being something different across different languages. So that what word means to speakers of one language isn't necessarily the same as what a word is in another. So what is morphology then? Let's go back to our two Spanish sentences for a minute. And let's remember that they have exactly the same material in them, but they have a different number of quote unquote words. Maybe the important concept here is the material rather than the so-called words. Even without knowing Spanish, it's actually pretty easy to identify four distinct elements in the sentence. We've got Homer, está, destrozando, and lo. What if the important issue here has to do with these elements or units that make up whatever it is that we call words? Well, now we might be talking. Let's look at a really simple example. One of my favorite words, dogs. Besides being cooler than cats, we can use the word dogs to make a point about morphology here. So let's think about how we can break the word dogs down into smaller pieces. We know from what we did in phonetics and phonology that the word dogs has four sounds. And we also know that it has one syllable when we pronounce it. We don't say dogs, we say dogs. But there's still another way we can break the word dogs down into parts with one part dog, which means whatever dog means in our brains, and another part z, which means plural. And these two units, these are linguistic units. The unit that we use to refer to the concept dog, and the unit that we use to refer to plurality. We call these units morphemes. So whatever words are in a given language, we can think of them as being built out of one or more morphemes. Like the English word dogs, which has two. So in this sense, sure, Morphology can be thought about as the study of the structure of words. As long as we understand that what we mean by word is quite different from what most people think about if they think about the concept of word. 
we are actually going to use another term. We're going to characterize morphology as the study of the lexicon. The lexicon is the term that linguists use to talk about our mental dictionary. But when we say mental dictionary, we aren't just talking about a list of the words that we know. Instead, we need to think about the lexicon both as where we store words and all of the morphemes that comprise them, and as the system for generating words through the combination of those morphemes. Okay, so now that we have a sense of what morphemes are, in subsequent videos, we'll look at a number of concepts that are central to the sub-area of morphology within linguistics. So don't go away. We'll be back with a new episode soon.